Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. And thank you so much for joining us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, teach us through your word today to be loyal subjects of your kingdom. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Our uh, text for today is found in the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 6 through 8. Uh, and verse 11 and 16, very familiar passage of scripture. That's uh, Ruth chapter one, verse six through eight and verse 11 and 16. I'm reading from the English standard version. Verse six reads, then she arose with her daughters-in-law uh, to return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the fields of Moab that the Lord had visited his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she was with her two daughters-in-law, uh, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, uh, go, return each of you to her mother's house. And may the Lord deal kindly with you as you has dealt with the dead and with me. And then uh, verse 11 says, but Naomi said, turn back my daughters. Why will you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? And verse 16 says, but Ruth said, do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. And your God, my God. That's the word of God for each of us to govern ourselves accordingly. And may his word bless us uh, richly uh, for the rest of our lives. And... Uh, uh, the subject for today is true loyalty, true loyalty, true loyalty. That's what the world needs more of, true loyalty for the right purpose. Uh, first point that I want to deal with is divine relationships can greatly surpass earthly kinship. Divine relationships can greatly surpass earthly kinship. Now, the book of Ruth begins with Imelech uh, leaving uh, Judah in search for a better life for his family. And then he and his two sons died in exile. But then Naomi decided that it was time for her to go home. Widows in her society, especially those with no sons, were in helpless and hopeless situations. Naomi, a uh, new name, now describes uh, her newfound life, Mara, or bitter. And we must never allow others to define uh, us by how we look. As the songwriters penned it, I'm glad that I don't look like all that I've been through. And, and we should not define ourselves by what we've been through. No condition of life, no circumstance, no experience can exempt us from having to change our dwelling places. And we cannot always live where we desire. However, we must accept changes in this world, changes which can make our lives mara or bitter. God's providences are often unexplained in this life, but all we have to do is wait on the clearer light of eternity. Can I say that again? 
God's providences are often unexplained in this life. But all we have to do is just wait on the clearer light of eternity to show us uh, where we're going and what God has in store for us. Now, even though there was no guarantee that things would be better at home in Judah, she decided to return anyway. Her daughters-in-law uh, decided to go with her. But somewhere along the way, Naomi realized that these two girls would be outsiders with no friends and no family and told them to go back to their uh, parents, especially their mothers. Girls are attached to their mothers. Boys are attached to their fathers, hopefully. But now Ruth could not be persuaded to return. Now, certainly Ruth loved her own birth mother, but she had become, uh, had come to the point where she loved Naomi, her mother-in-law. Now, this is a good example that rebuffs the adage, absent makes the heart grow fonder. It doesn't necessarily always have to work that way. Sometimes absent make the heart grow weaker towards a, a someone. Now, Ruth had come to love Naomi with a spiritual and eternal love that binds two persons together in a way beyond human understanding. And only those who share the love of God can establish a bond that is thicker than blood. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24 says, uh, and this is the new uh, international version, it says, a man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. When you've got one loyal friend, You've got somebody that sticks closer than a brother. But when you, you can have many unloyal companions and you can end up in ruin. Now, how great is our Lord to build even a greater affection within our relationship as we go through the twists and turns of life? We ought to take inventory of our lives and consider the depths of our relationship with Christian brothers and sisters. Maybe this would be a great time to give thanks to God for the beauty of those relationships and then to do something tangible to thank them for being a close friend to you, like a brother. And, and also it would be a good time to do something like send a note or a card to them expressing the joy that comes from having such a friend. Now, point number two is genuine commitment to another is commitment to the end of yourself. Oh, that's, that's all right there. Uh, genuine commitment to another is commitment to the end of yourself. It is not possible in true friendship to tell where one person begins and the other one ends. Listen to these words from uh, the lips of Ruth. Where you go, I will go. Where you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. But for Ruth, even that was not enough. Hear the climatic uh, words of affection for her beloved mother-in-law. She says, where you die, I will die. And there will I be buried be buried. In other words, nothing but death will separate us. 
Jesus said in John 15 and 13, no one has a greater love than this, that someone would lay down his life for his friend. Then Paul writes in Ephesians chapter five that we are to love our wives as Christ loved his bride, the church, even to the point of death. God intends for human commitments, particularly marriage, to be unending. And there can be no commitment to another without the total giving of one's self. When Ruth promised her daughter-in-law she would go where she went, live among her people, honor her God, she showed herself to be a good woman. When she committed herself to the very end of both of their lives, she revealed the great woman that she truly was. John D. Rockefeller once wrote, I believe that every right implies responsibility. Every opportunity responsibility. Uh, 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 implies obligation and every possession uh, a duty. We love to talk about rights, but we easily overlook our responsibilities. When we stand at the altar of a church to be married or to dedicate our children to God, we are assuming rights. But with those rights comes tremendous responsibilities. Ruth made a courageous commitment to Naomi, and it was one not easy to make. Naomi was so hurt by, her, by how life had turned out, how her life had turned out, that she changed her name to Mara, which means bitter. She may not have been the easiest person to make a commitment to. But Ruth was willing to give up some of her hopes and dreams because she understood what it meant to make a commitment to live and to live by it. Third point, our, let's see, true love goes beyond one's own pleasure to pleasing another. True love goes beyond one's own pleasure to pleasing another. Now, who wouldn't want to marry a beautiful, gorgeous, and gracious woman like Ruth? But Boaz, who became God's special man in her life, was not thinking only of himself. What a thoughtful word he spoke when he told his friends that he was marrying her. It imparts uh, that she might, he, he was doing it so that she might raise up children to continue the name of her deceased husband. Could it be this awesome act of unselfish? Love by the man she married was inspired by the selfishness, selflessness rather, by the selflessness of her own life. I think Ruth, her love was contagious. That kind of love usually is. Spend time with people that love as Ruth loved. And before long, you're putting the past behind you and celebrating the future. I love the words of Oswell Chambers. He says, leave the irreparable past in his hands, in the Lord's hands, and step out into the irresistible future with him. If Ruth's story is about anything, it's about loyalty. Loyalty to her mother-in-law. 
loyalty to God, loyalty to her new husband. Loyalty is our pledge of allegiance, our promise to stick it out in good times and bad. Loyalty means that if there's war, then we go to war. If we die, we die. Jesus did not come with a secret society and a hidden agenda. The opportunity is there for all of us to love him enough to take up our cross daily and follow wherever he chooses to lead. And it means not turning back. A good way to consider loyalty is found in the word service. Ignatius Loyola uh, said, Lord, teach us to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not heed the wound, to toil and not seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for any reward except that of knowing that we do serve your will. Jesus showed us true loyalty from the beginning to the end of his life here on earth. Luke chapter two, verse 49, he says, and he said unto them, how is it that ye sought me? Wist you not that I must be about my father's business? From the cradle to the grave here on earth, Jesus says to us, don't you know that I must be about my father's business? And is that too much to ask of us? And then John chapter 18, verse 37, then Pilate said to him, so you are, king, are a king. Jesus answered, you say that I'm a king. For this purpose, I was born. And for this purpose, I have come into the world to bear witness of the truth. And everyone uh, who is of the truth listens to my voice. Matthew 26 and verse 39 says, And going a little further, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Not my will, but thy will be done. Jesus showed us real commitment on one Friday, on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary, where he hung, bled, and died to pay the price for our sin. They took him down and buried him in a borrowed tomb, but early, I mean early in the morning on the third day, Jesus rose with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. Jesus has power to change our lives from bitter to sweet. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know, this is the English Standard Version also, For I know the plan I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. Hallelujah. That's enough to close on. Let us uh, pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for a wonderful lesson in true loyalty. We ask that you would cultivate your word in us and cause it to come alive in us and through us. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. That's all I've got for today. I pray that God will continue to bless your life through his word. Allow his word to come alive in you to, so that you can be a living testimony. See you next time. Father on up the road. Bye-bye.